In the year 470, by the dynastic reckoning, Princess Fia Adesia, the seventh born child of the Emperor Grandel Adesia, is informed that she, being a uh, late born child and of no particular use to her parents, is to be married off to the fearsome brute of Caledon, a minor nobleman from a distant land famed for its barbaric people and even more barbaric practices. Fia, a spiteful, bratty, even priggish girl, is not excited about being sent off to the dangerous region, um, but she makes the best of it, and she gathers around her a small retinue of soldiers, uh, some more competent than others, all of them with some sort of a failing that makes them possible to be spared from the uh, royal escort, and uh, is shipped off to this foreign land. On her trip, she encounters all sorts of different people, travelers from cultures different from hers, um, the these very people she's traveling with who have very different backgrounds from a spoiled, entitled princess. And in the process, she begins to learn and begins to grow and begins to see the very beginning sparks of ma the magic that uh, is inborn in this world. Now, this story primarily is a fantasy. Um, that's my favorite thing to write. I think it's what I'm best at writing. And a big part of it is a magic based around the Greek concept of the four humors. There are four primary cultures, Fia's culture, the Dulami people, uh, the culture of her intended, we'll say, the Kalish people, and then the uh, wild Rulaki raiders from the south, and the flamboyant and showy uh, Avrin people from Avrin court in the west. These four cultures all have distinct things that make them who they are, but among them are the inborn magic traits. In Fia's case, malediction and benediction, the ability to move injuries from yourself to someone else or from someone else to yourself, either healing or bestowing pain in equal measure. Fia is not terribly excited about this because those who uh, exhibit this power in particular are classed in the subcategory of the Mothern, which is sort of a sketchy wizard sorcerer bad news prophet sort of person she's followed around by one such modern locust who begins to teach her the beginnings of uh, malediction which she takes to startlingly quickly uh, upon reaching Dag Kazmer, the uh, fortress city in Caledon where the brute lives she comes to the uh, realization that this place isn't all that she expected. The brute, while nearly seven feet tall and terrifying to behold, is mostly shy, timid, and not very good at conversation. And his brother, the charming Solis Eardkazmer, is smooth and worrying. Additionally, she finds a surprising comfort in the presence of the servant girl, Tirsa, who was stolen from her people, the Rulaki Raiders, and now uh, lives essentially as a slave in this society. Fia is close-minded, is not thrilled about the idea of um, being integrated in this culture, but is also wickedly clever and begins plotting a way to leverage the loyalty of her soldiers and of her new uh, tentative friendships with the servant Tirsa and with the brute's brother Solus. As the novel progresses, she begins to slowly build up her power until she eventually makes an attempt to overthrow the tyrant king, uh, the brute's father. Now, all of this is contained in a uh, relatively lengthy story, but for my project itself, I only submitted three chapters of it, along with the uh, uh, before chapter little bits where I do a little bit of lore exposition largely from the perspective of Mothern Locust and from the uh, other Mothern Saint Fire, uh, Moondog, and Granite, all of whom are um, on the more academic side who give some insight into 
the inner workings of this world and the way that all the other magic systems work. It's written from a third-person perspective, but fairly close. Fia is definitely the focus of it. Um, and the process of writing this was pretty challenging. The last novel that I wrote was in first person and was urban fantasy, so this one was a pretty big departure, although it was sort of like coming home, uh, because fantasy is the main thing I like to read. Um, additionally, it was challenging in some uh, worldview ways. Uh, Fia is very similar to me in some ways, in that she's uh, spiteful and kind of mean, but uh, different in that um, she's female and from a fairly strictly hierarchical, hierarchical? Hier something, uh, culture that has a pretty strict caste system and um, lots of things that we in today in this country don't have to the same degree. Um, writing Fia's interactions was sometimes difficult because she doesn't choose the nice um, response. She'll say things that actively sabotage her own position because in the spur of the moment, saying something mean to someone just feels right. Uh, but I hope that over the course of uh, the bits that I submit, it becomes clear that there is more depth to her than just the spoiled princess, and that um, she has some actual depth to her, because I think she's a pretty interesting character, and I think she's pretty worthwhile. This uh, project in total came out to about 50,000 words uh, of a projected about 80,000, and the amount that I submitted was maybe an eighth of that. Um, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the whole spiel. Um, I plan in, for the rest of the project to um, finish out this rough draft after uh, I graduate and then uh, do some revisions and maybe try some publishing. So we'll just see. Uh, thank you, everyone.